I've seen some nasty things on the cinema screen, but that was next level. You know, I've never seen any of the Saw movies after the second one because I was like, I don't think I can handle that level of gore anymore. Yes, I can because I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I just saw In a Violent Nature. Let's talk about it. Written and directed by Chris Nash. This is his directorial debut. Um, okay. There's no way I can explain what this movie is about without giving the whole thing away. It's relatively short, about an hour and 34 minutes, give or take, and it gets into the action very quickly. This is like a slasher movie, but backwards. Think of it like this. In a normal slasher movie, we're following a bunch of idiot teenagers who are too stupid and too self-absorbed to realize that there's somebody upstairs waiting for them with a butcher knife. Now, normally, we, the audience, we're aware that there is somebody upstairs with a butcher knife. And to, to some degree, we there are context clues to let us know that they're not in the house alone. The difference here is not only are we aware that there is somebody upstairs with a butcher knife, we're upstairs with them. So our crazy's name is John, and about 98% of this movie is told from the perspective of John. Wherever he goes, we go. We're right behind him. He's not just our narrator, he's our tour guide. Now you would think because we are in on what's happening, it wouldn't be scary because we can see what's coming. That make, It makes it so much worse. Just because we're following John doesn't mean we know John. And it's that lack of knowledge that introduces fear into the story. We're given little pieces of who he might be throughout the film we're even given the complete lore of john but that's still not enough information because it's not answering the basic question that's just sitting in our gut what the hell is he he's not even sadistic it's just pure violence uncontained rage and it's terrifying because you see these innocent unknowing people minding their business so to speak and you know that there's this monster in the woods and you can't warn them you can't tell them there's even a scene of these kids sitting around a campfire and the way he builds anxiety with the camera is the camera is constantly circling them from the outside and that's where it's crazy because we know that outside of this circle, somewhere in the woods, is this man and we're with him. And this is constantly circling them. And we're, we're constantly looking out for him because we know he's there, but they don't know he's there. It, it's just, the, the way it just kind of swirls in your gut, that kind of visceral fear that you look for when you go to a horror movie. Nobody has done it like this this year. Thank you. That's all, thank you. And normally in horror movies, we have little cues, the creaking of a door, a creepy score that lets us know, hey, the, you know, our bad guy, we thought he was down for the count, but he's up. The music turns up. He, the bad guy's about to come around the corner, music comes up. That's what we normally have. We normally have these little cues to let us know that something is coming and to prepare for it. It almost softens the blow, softens the palate, makes it so that we can kind of enjoy and be engaged in what's happening without it being too terribly scary because at least there's music that's something familiar, something that can kind of smooth and soothe that ride. That doesn't happen here. Why? Because there's no score. The only music you hear is music that's coming from inside of a house, that's coming from a radio, coming from a phone. That's it. There are no creepy violins, horns, there's no score, there's nothing to cue us into what could possibly be coming around the corner. Absolutely brilliant. This movie's brilliant. This movie's incredibly amazing. But I gagged. I I physically gagged. I I may have thrown up a little bit. I don't know. That was excellent. Now I talk a lot about character development in horror movies. Like that's the secret to good horror. It's character development. Giving your audience characters that they can care about so when things happen to them, they care. This has kind of flipped the script a little bit because the character that we spend the most time with is the one we're supposed to be afraid of. And he's doing crazy, unspeakable things. And we are forced to bear witness. Y'all remember that conversation we were having about the man and the bear? Perfect timing. 